We're here in London, at the Royal Albert Hall, one of the most beautiful and historically important venues in London. Since it was opened by Queen Victoria in 1871, it staged everything from Jimi Hendrix to Sigma Wrestling, the proms of course, and numerous other events in between. We're here to meet the team behind the scenes that make this venue work day to day. My name is Matthew Todd. I'm the Head of Programming and Engagement. I've been here three and a half years, uh, which was one year pre-COVID, two years COVID, and uh, trying to reinvent everything around the building uh, with everybody else during that time. Um, so we've had the best part of a year back up and running um, and with full audiences, full capacity, performers, orchestras, and just really looking to push on through into the new year and, and look for a, another good year in 2023. Um, the building obviously opened in 1871, uh, it was opened by Victoria, since then it's, it's staged such a, an incredible array of events from uh, an indoor marathon to Jimi Hendrix. Um, what is it about the building that you think that attracts um, audiences and performers most particularly? What, what, what's the big appeal for them do you think? Is it the history or is it the, 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 the facilities? It's everything. I, it's the wow factor, it's the fact that every time you walk into the building, no matter how many times you've been in before, it's awe-inspiring and for performers and audiences alike the shape of it is extraordinary every performer can see almost every member of the audience as they're looking around um, and every audience member can see not only the performers but also all of the other audience members so the atmosphere it creates is absolutely incredible and it's it's one of the most beautiful if not the, the most beautiful and historic venue in in london if not the uk Oh, it'll be Europe. Um, when it comes to the facilities, though, apart from the, the you know the acoustics and and the history and the splendour of the building, when it comes to the actual you know the physics of, of putting a show on, if you like, yeah. what are the kind of key facilities that are available? That has there been any investment in recent years? Well, we have an incredible sound system which was installed by DNB, so that was put in in place in 2019. So the intention for that was obviously to cater for a lot of what might have been idiosyncrasies of the building and uh, to fill in certain uh, gaps in, in the way in which sound was distributed. So now we have a box, uh, in each box we have um, small speakers which can create a surround sound and also an infill into those boxes. Um, we have, it, it's a purpose-built system um, and it also means that anybody coming in to use the building um, can come in and plug straight into it. Um, and we have a great team here who know every aspects of it and the ins and outs of it and can advise on how best to use the sound on the day. We've kind of got one stage which we can extend and sometimes we've had people you know, do shows in the round and things like that so we can sometimes reconfigure our PA to accommodate that. When we do cinemas we change our PA back. Our lighting rig is um, you know overstage but once again we have various points in the ceiling that we can maybe put in so with enough warning we will try and accommodate what we can. Uh, one thing that is um, slightly different from a lot of arenas is uh, because of the mushrooms and because we've got a, a, a covered ceiling if you want to put you know uh, hoist points in certain places that can involve a little bit more work than maybe sort of somewhere like the o2 where they've got like a grid system but other than that i think um yeah i think we're reasonably flexible we've got you know circa coming in in the new year and we're going to build a floor that is quite large you know to cover the arena floor we've got Royal right performance at the moment and their thrust is quite large and stuff like that and their backstage is actually our stage so so yeah I think we're I think we're okay uh, I don't we wouldn't want to volunteer us for a promenade show though <laughs> so I think that might be a little bit too much but great and the as, as I understand it the auditorium is a 5200 capacity space I'm just wondering what flexibility there is in in that area in terms of the the sort of different shapes and sizes of venues of shows that you can put on in the venue but also um, what other spaces there are available in the building that are suitable for performance? Sure. Well, the, the auditorium itself is, is hugely flexible and one of the uh, great characteristics of it is that we can take all the seats out of the arena and we can create shows in the round. And we can do that across genres. So we can do that for uh, ballet. Uh, we can do it for strongman shows that we have in the hall. We can do it for boxing rings um, that go in the middle and tennis 
courts as well. We have the Elgar Room, which is also a late night venue. Um, and one in which we can host workshops and talks and uh, small cinema screenings. We can put maybe smaller events on in the gallery. Uh, we can put like a sound system in there or tap into the delays and stuff like that and light it. Uh, we have done shows in the loading bay in the past, but that's before my time. Um, and I think there's a little bit of room in sort of some of the restaurant spaces. So there's a little PA in the Verdi and there is another one in the North Circle bar. And obviously the mushrooms are a kind of iconic, kind of synonymous aspect of the auditorium. What's their purpose? Uh, they are uh, to help with the acoustics. So the famous joke is, is that when the Albert Hall was first built, the first the conductor who first played it got to hear the orchestra twice because the sound you know, reflected back off the glass ceiling that was in there and then uh, did that. So and uh, they put the valerium in, which is like the aluminium ceiling in the 40s, I think just after the Second World War to aid the BBC looking after the proms. And then in the 60s, they put the mushrooms in and the idea being as the sound travels up past the mushrooms, it may reflect off the ceiling, but then it kind of can't get back on stage. So it just helps a lot with the reverb and reflections of sound. So. Certainly there's no apparent need for investment. Looking, walking around this building is absolutely stunning. Every corner of it seems to, to have some kind of secret beauty to it. But um obviously as a business going forward what are your kind of key priorities in terms of you know areas of focus there are certain projects that we had to put on hold during the pandemic um that were started and not finished um i think we will be making special cases for those because they're very exciting um, there's a couple which are down and affect the the backstage area um and uh, if we can raise the money to to make those happen uh, make them a reality then it'll make a huge difference why should a promoter or artist want to play this building, apart from the obvious history and its splendour? It is a unique venue. It's, uh, there is nothing else like it. The, the character of it, the size of it, the, um, the impression that it gives to artists and also to audiences is utterly unique. We're able to offer a, a fantastic welcome to anybody coming here. And you know we do that through the front of house staff for audiences as well and it's, uh, it will always, I hope, be something which is on a bucket list for any artist um, to come and perform here. Once they come and perform here, then my guess, my hope, is that they will be wishing to come back and do so again.